I need to leave. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I need to leave at a quarter to the hour to take my son to a trombone lesson. So uh, I noticed that Fabio is co-host, which I'm very grateful for because it means I don't have to faff about with things and you can do all the kind of stuff. Um, but uh, the Pi Script Fun is kind of like uh, the analogy I always use is it's like you're, you're around the water cooler and a colleague walks up to you and goes, hey, do you want to see something cool that I've been working on? And you go, oh, what's this? And they show you a Death Star that they built in, I don't know, Pi Script and it looks amazing or something like that. And you go, wow, that's awesome. Do you want to see this game I've made? And it's just sharing kind of cool hacks and fun things and stuff like that. Um, so does anyone, I need, as we always do, uh, could you just put your hand up as in the Zoom hand reaction thing, uh, could you put your hand up if you have anything to show? Piers is clapping. Uh, I'm assuming he means put his hand up, but yeah, I yeah, do. Yeah, yeah that, that's clearly it's me. Good to see uh, you, Piers. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to uh, raise hand. There we go. I'll, uh, I'll change it to raise hand. There you go. Anyone else? And Chris has, and Martin has. This is going to be a quick one. Okay, so um uh and now everybody's hands have gone down because zoom has just introduced that feature where the hands go away after how many seconds i can't uh, so anyway there we go uh, uh let's see if i can remember what's going on um i was going to present two things i was going to actually do a live release of the next version of pi script and you could watch me do that uh, that should take only about three minutes um there are enough core developers in this room to tell me not to do that if there's anything wrong with the main grant, but I don't think there is, but I could do that. And then I have a Christmassy thing uh, to show. Uh, Piers, what was yours going to be? Uh, so basically, as a Bolton's aware of this, been having a, a number of chats with Jeff. Jeff, thank you very much for helping clean a little bit of code and make that simpler. And um, so basically, we've got a Neon, which is a uh, an open source robot arm. And... Uh, I have put together a remote works from anywhere in the world Miam controller. So I will share with you the Miam link and then you will all be able to move said robot. The intention will be for me to move my camera down directly so that you can see the Miam. Um, and uh, I had a mate in Germany on the train about 30 minutes ago move the arm while he was going along so uh as long as it works all good to go all good what could possibly go wrong uh, Piers, it's always a pleasure to see you matey and i can't wait to see your arm um i'm trying to think who else uh put their hand up chris i remember you had your hand up uh what were you going to show uh pi script controlling my um cnc machine awesome awesome could we put Here's his arm connected to your CNC machine, and then we could just like do the whole thing. Okay, there was somebody else. Martin, what was yours going to be? Can I just say I want to do my demo before all the cool stuff? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, what is your demo going to be? I'm just so my, demo is, my demo is going to be showing how we can create a very simple um, open AI assistant using an API proxy. Um, which is now a feature available in PyScript.com. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, any, no, any, no, no moving this? parts. I haven't got a Lego robot. I haven't got anything that's going to run around the script, run around or move. So, yeah. Yeah. I have to say, uh, I, I really like the fact that you've called your robot arm a uh, Mion, which sounds like a kind of like a, a, an alien race from Doctor Who. Um, any, uh, any more um, presentations that I've not missed, that I've, uh, not mentioned because zoom has put everybody's hand down no okay um so uh mine should be relatively quick i can go first and then martin do you want to go next and then uh chris uh and then piers how does that sound Yes, it's like, uh, what was that? Uh, yeah, anyway, there was a TV program in the 70s where they were all in little blocks and anyway. Okay, so let me share my screen. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, so if I go to Firefox and GitHub, PyScript, PyScript, you're all seeing this? Yeah. 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 Okay, releases. Uh, let me just. 
move my kind of windows out of the way so I can click things. So these are the releases that we have here. Okay, this was the last one that we did uh, last week, uh, but I want to create a new release. So I click this button here, uh, and I'm going to create a new tag. Uh, we use uh, Calver calendar versioning. So this is the 12th month of 2023, and this is the first release. Okay. And the release type is going to be the same thing. And uh, generate release notes generally does things, uh, although it, uh, it sent me a link to a kind of a, like a diff when the tags both appear. Um, I want to just call out Jeff, who does amazing blog posts whenever we do a release as well. So I can imagine just as we're talking right now, uh, he's going to be typing away and all of that sort of stuff. Um, so generally, you can do that. Uh, this is the latest release. And then I'm going to publish the release. Uh, speak now or forever. Hold your peace and tell me whether I should or shouldn't. I feel like we need a drum roll or something. Yes. Can I control your screen so I can do it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've clicked publish. Okay. And so what it's done is automatically attached a zip of the current state of things as well. Uh, but if we go look at actions, um, we can see. that it's doing the published release. So this takes, I don't know, anywhere between 30 seconds and uh, a minute to do. It's doing a whole bunch of kind of npm -y stuff, building stuff and running a few tests and stuff. Everybody's favorite thing is to uh, um, is to is to watch uh, GitHub Actions running. Uh, okay. We like to watch GitHub Actions succeed. <laughs> succeed, yes. Now where there it is. is. It? Okay, so it is uh, bah, 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 not there. Sync to S three. No. No. Okay, so here, uh, if I. Open a new tab is the new release. That's it. That's how you release PyScript. Okay. And uh, essentially, it gives you everything that you need. And this is what's run by this. Okay. Um, so update your references. That's it. Okay. Uh, and for my next trick, uh, I thought, given that it is a kind of a, uh, it, it's nearly Christmas time. And so uh, I thought it would be a, a useful thing for us as a community to come together and do something Christmassy. So I have uh, in about, I don't know, 30 seconds earlier this afternoon, botched together a Christmas card written in uh, PyScript. And what I want to do is select speaker, um, ba -ba 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 -ba, audio settings. Uh, I wonder if you're going to be able to hear this because it has music in it. But um, anyway, can you hear it? Yeah. <laughs> Here's my PyScript Christmas cards. Oh <clears throat> no! I had to stop. There you go. Just click run again. Um, and what I think uh, we should do is, over the next week, create some PyScript Christmas cards. Uh, just use your imagination, knock yourself out, use the latest release. Uh, animations, I had some CSS animation that I was attaching to things. Uh, go take a look at, at the project. It's a really shonky, really um, rough and ready Christmas card. But let's uh, next time we meet in a fortnight, let's see what sort of Christmas cards. It's going to be just before Christmas, but let's see what Christmas cards we produce. Uh, that's just a suggestion for folks. That's enough of me. Uh, any questions on anything I've just demoed? Everybody up for a Christmas card? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, cool. Good, good. I can see nods going on. Okay. Uh, uh, the big reveal will be in a fortnight then. So, uh, Martin, I'd like to invite you uh, to give us a good fun show and tell. The thing, um, so this is the latest, this is what's in PyScript.com now. My quick demo was we've got the um, concept of API proxies now, which allows you to uh, make calls from 
the server side of PyScript.com. If, for example, you've written a bit of code like a PyScript assistant, which requires an open API key, which I don't want to expose on the client side. Obviously, I don't want to give you my API key because it costs real money for me to do that. So this is a little bit of code which um, chats with an assistant. I've got a little assistant um, object that I've created. And you'll notice that the URL that it's actually going to use to call OpenAI is through my PyScript.apps account and then through my API proxies. And I've created an API proxy called OpenAI-assist. And then I just give my assistant ID, but this isn't this isn't my private key, right? This is just telling me which of my assistants is it Fred or Bob or Jane or whoever. Um, and then in here I can say, um, you know, where is Paris? And then it will cost me some small amount of money to um, to run the prompt, and it will come back hopefully. <laughs> There we go. Oh, and I asked my assistant to reply in the style of a pirate for Nicholas's sake. So that's why it's got ahoy matey in terms of the thing. But then I so I'll just show you how I've set that up. So this is obviously I haven't had to expose my open AI key on this. So if I go to um, my account, we've now got this idea of the API proxies. So I've got one called open AI assist. And so I've set up this is the URL I want you to call. And then this is the authorization. So I've set up which headers that I want. And these are the headers that I need to pass for OpenAI. And then going hand in hand with this is, okay, I've got this idea of a secret. My my OpenAI key is my secret. So I put that in my API secrets. I've created um, a secret with my OpenAI keys, only available to me, only ever seen by me, doubly encrypted in the database, so it's super safe. So then I can, it means that I can make these calls through my proxy to wherever I need to go with all my API keys, anything that I need to keep secret hidden on the server side. And hence, and then that's the, that's assist. That was it. Awesome. Awesome. I love the pirate. I, but the thing is, is that this could be to any API, right? Exactly. Yeah. The whole yeah. point. Yeah. It's not an open AI. This is not an open AI thing. Yeah. The idea is that anytime you've got some kind of credentials or things that you want to call on the um, server side, but you don't want to expose client side. Antonio. Uh, yes. A, a question. So once you have a proxy set up, everybody on everybody who used the, the PyScript app can, can use it, right? Using going through the okay. proxy. It's almost like I, I paid you to ask that question. <laughs> that is true. So there's two parts of this. One is I will send you the invoice, yes. I may want to keep the API keys hidden on the server side. The second the second part of it is where's my assist app? If I oh actually no, let's go back in. If I go to my assist app settings, you'll also know that I can actually say who can use my application. This is another feature I wasn't really gonna demo, but I can say, right, either everyone in the world can use my application or actually just me. And now, um, or I can actually say, you know, ev everybody at Anaconda, um, or I can I, I can add other, other users individually by username. Now, when they go to my application, if I actually, that, if I actually do this, and then go and view my site. So now I actually have to go through and sign into my PyScript.com account. Um, oh, and this is just because I'm in Anaconda. You would normally, a normal user would not have to go through this. This is our single sign-on system, which means you have to click 28 buttons to <laughs> sign into anything. I don't know why it's, that's, that changed. But it's this. secure, it's secure though. It's yeah. a secure, not a bug. While yeah. we wait, actually, Martin, I, yeah. I would suggest that we. But there we go. So, I've, so now I've logged into my application, and no one else can use it. So my 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 my, my credit card is safe right now, right? Uh, I I, th I still have a question. So there's a um, the security feature is per app, not per proxy. Yes, you can't. Yes, yeah. so if you've if I've exposed my proxy somewhere else then in one of my free apps, then yes, you could use my proxy. You, what you can't do is call it, what you can't do is call it from anywhere else because you'll get a court there's cause protection. My proxy can only be called from there. 
Okay, so if someone sniffs the traffic and see what is the, um, the the URL of the proxy, then then they can they can use it. Something like this. Uh, as as long as they're calling it from this domain, they can. Yes. Ah, okay, they need to call it from this domain. Okay, 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 makes sense. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. The proxies are per account, though. Not. Yes, they are. Yes. Yes. So it's yeah. linked to your. Oh, oh. So they can be used only from an app. Yes, on on your subdomain. So okay, 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 okay. Then it's it's yes. safe. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Is there any more questions for Martin? Can we add a feature to actually exclude a specific users? So if you would yeah, yeah, yeah. do like yes. exclude Antonio, you could do that. Yes, we need, a, we need allow and deny lists. Yes, we could do that. Yes, but yeah. talking of Chris, hi Chris Lafra. Uh, Hello. Uh, now we have two Chris's. Uh, Chris Rogers, Professor Professor Chris. Uh, you said you had a demo, uh, and now Martin has gone. Um, uh, would Would you like to, to to give us your demo? I would. Uh, I want to start by pointing out that this demo is going to use twelve dot one. Like uh, like everybody should. Careful, careful. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so basically, there's two things I wanted to show. One is that I can actually open up G code. I can read G code, and you can see it actually is moving the. Uh, I hope you guys can see that it's moving the bit. Wow. Um, that's a, obviously a simulation. You connect to serial. I disconnected the serial because I didn't really want to run it here. But you'll notice I can gray out buttons and not gray out buttons and move things around and change my speeds and all that kind of stuff. The reason I wanted to show you that is because the part that's really I'm working on is uh, how the students would build that. And so I'm coming up, I'm trying to come up with some higher level stuff where they can just say, I want a button at this location. And if you hit the button, go here. And what's the simplest way we can do that? And we can actually group them together and you can have your own callbacks that happen when they're activated. Um, and then uh, you can go into, we'll have, we, right now we have buttons, sliders, and a few other elements, um, buttons, text fields, input fields, and sliders, and drop down menus. But the idea would be to have a, a slew of sort of standard pieces so that at no time they can build their own UI really quickly and then throw the stuff behind. So, but the coolest part is the fact that you can actually see where the, the, the tool is cutting and, uh, and it really does. It's a little bit nerve wracking, but other than that, <laughs> that's all I got. So, so Chris, I have a question for you. So what you're saying is that it's simulating it at the moment, but your CNC machine actually connects via a serial uh, connection. And uh, that's how the actual big machine kind of with the drill bit and what have you kind of does the thing um, with the code that you've got. That's pretty damn cool. You basically, all it does is grab the next line of G code, moves the simulated thing, and sends it over the serial port. Right. Cool. Cool. It's nice and simple. Very, very simple. Great stuff. Any more questions for Chris? Martin? Not so much a question, but one thing I just, I really liked about that approach is because we've just been talking this morning for a couple of hours about a, 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 um, ways of doing UIs in PyScript, right? You know, we've got the LTK approach now, and we've got standard ways that we build up hierarchical component or widget trees of things, which is the way the rest of the world works. But this I really like, because the second argument to all your widgets was where does it go on the screen? It's like, and that's the idea of I've got a canvas that I'm just putting things on. I'm, I'm putting things around this canvas. And that just like as a, as a philosophical little turn, I'm like, that's awesome actually. And, yeah. and one of the ideas is to actually make it be a, a canvas so you can draw boxes and stuff in the background or an image so you can actually draw something in a professional drawing where, you know, we have a lot of students that are human factors people. So they draw stuff uh, in whatever drawings thing they like, and they can just copy paste that into the background. And then everything is relative to that particular image. Because it's like, it's really interesting idea, right? Because we're so ingrained as geeks, right? We're, we're like, of course, it's a hierarchy of widget objects. And that's how I want to build my application. But for, for people building application, why would, that's right. that's just because that's how we were taught. But maybe laying things out and then being able to, you know, have like these things, animated connections made on, on, a, on a free, like a, like a mind map kind of canvas of, of my application. 
I think that's I think that's awesome. Cool. Any more questions? I, I know Antonio is thrilled to bits uh, to see this, Chris, because he can uh, he can now get his drawings of rabbits CNC'd seed and milled out and. Uh, you know, uh, just we'll have a whole world full of uh, these words. I, I have a three D printer. I can print you my three D print them. Oh my gosh, we're going in three dimensions now. That, that's that's uh, that's amazing. Um, okay, Chris, was that a raising of your hand? Chris Lafra, Chris, go for it. I've got something to demo as well. Okay, uh, Chris, uh, can I just pause you there? I answered your your point in the chat and said that we've oh, got yeah, Piers next, and then you can go after Piers. Okay, yep. got one, one more to go. Fantastic. And Ted has joined the call. Hello, Ted. It's lovely to see you. Um, you've missed some amazing demos. Oh, damn it. Um, so, but uh, but here we go. Piers, uh, uh, let, let's uh, oh, just take it away, matey. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, probably the easiest question we'll ask here is, um, who's the furthest away uh, on the call? Is, there, is everybody in the UK? Is anybody outside the UK on this one? Lots of Americans. Texas. Okay, so who's from Texas? Fabio and Martin in head, I would say. Okay, excellent. I'd like to see if you can open the following page for me, please. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the camera. Hopefully you can see a little, little robot there. I'm just kind of curious to see if... Uh, if I got control. I got controls. What happens if I click this? <laughs> oh, ah! yeah. you just opened, you just closed the. Uh... There we go. Nice. Pick up the teacup. Pick up the teacup. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think me. I'm quite that strong. I'm going. Um, I'm going for the teacup. I'm going for the teacup. <laughs> He's going for the teacup. I can see. It. Yeah. <laughs> That's really just, just too long. That's awesome. Feedback holder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chris. <laughs> superb, superb. So, how's it working? So, basically, what we've got at the moment is we've got a um, in the actual meow itself. We are using uh, what are we using for this one? We're using uh, XML HTTP correct uh, request from JS. Um, okay, we are share then... the screen so we can see the code. Uh, I can do. Thankfully, it's neat enough that I probably can because Jeff's helped me out. I don't want to put you on the spot, but you know. Yeah, no, that's fine. <laughs> so bear with me a second. Uh, Chrome tab. So we want this one. I've already got the project cloned in my account, so your robot's going to be moving all over the place when you least expect it. So, do you know, uh, we've kind of had this conversation with some of the colleagues at work, actually. Is kind of the, the whole fun thing is we'll probably just leave it going and then at some point in the day we'll just start to see me I'm working. So um so basically what we've got here is uh we've got the the I, I kind of looked around to try and find the easiest way of communicating and this was the one that I found here. Uh and so basically what you've got here is we're looking through the uh the elements in the form uh based upon the uh the class or the ID. Uh, on the class, sorry. And then from that, um, thanks to Jeffrey using a, a create proxy, and that's allowing us to then uh, hit our little event handler. And all that does is send the button action. And then from there, what we're actually doing is um, we are sending that to a little Flask server. And the Flask server is the smallest amount of code you can ever wear. I think one of them how many lines of code the flask is. So it's um, all in all, I think we're looking at somewhere, somewhere around sort of 30 lines of flask, it's literally just a single page flask app. And that's going to MQTT. Um, and MQTT's then got a little uh, publisher or a laptop. That's then point connecting to a Raspberry Pico W. And uh, and the Pico W is uh, is then picking up that uh, MQTT and is telling it what to do. So uh, so it's uh, there's there's a little bit of a chain to it, um, but it works, um, and that's that's the principle behind it. So uh, 
the uh the, the next thing which we'll probably look to do with this one is uh, the boys i've got an eight-year-old and 12 year old uh, and basically what they've said is okay but can it move more <laughs> so i'm like okay so we're gonna put a remote control rc car on the underside of it and actually turn it into a rover um so at that stage we'll do some additional controls um but yeah no it all seems to be uh working well between all of you so uh so that is my demo. P Piers, uh, you've basically, uh, I mean, NASA eat your heart out. I mean, um, we, 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 we've got the beginnings of a moon rover here already or a Mars rover. Uh, and this is for educationalists as well. This is, I'm thinking, you know, primary school teachers. This is wonderful. I know Chris uh, and then Antonio had questions in the chat. Chris, do you want to ask a question? Uh, I was going to say, if you, if you want, Piers, I'd be happy to help you just drive serial control straight from PyScript through the Pico W there. You can get rid of the whole MQTT. Um, yeah, that would be, so the, the, the straightaway answer is yes, please. Yeah, that would be absolutely fantastic. You know, I, I've, I've been looking at, you know, what, what are the easiest ways of communicating to do I know when, uh, Nicholas, when you came over and did uh, the, the amazing into one pi script over in Office of Python. Uh, I know that, uh, so we've got a number of uh, great people, which Carlos happens to work for Microbit. Uh, and I think Carlos did that over the same serial um, um, when he was controlling the Microbit as well. And so, yeah, it would be it would be uh, amazing to be able to do that because realistically, this is it's, uh, it's interesting from Nicholas's point of view in regards to, to STEM. So yeah, I've got an eight year old and a 12 year old boy and, and we live and breathe STEM. Um, so uh, in, in every aspect, and this was really a fun chance to try something out. I've never, we've, we've uh, MicroPython and IoT from sensors and things like that we've done before, but this is the first time we've actually tried a bit of hardware out and, uh, and got it working. So no, that'd be really, uh, really interesting and helpful. Thank you. Any more questions for Piers? <clears throat> yes, uh, they might, might, I mean, first I wanted to show, look what I have here. I think it's exactly the same. The same. Ah, uh, superb. Yes, though you VR. also have, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, well, that it's all taking down for here, so maybe I, I can try to control it with PyScript now. Uh, the question is, I didn't understand why Flask is needed. So you send a request to Flask, which sends to MQTT? Yes. You could send MQTT from the PyScript directly, I think. Yeah, so I couldn't work out how to do it in truth. Um, so that was that's the simplest answer to do it. Um, okay. So in in you know I'm I'm as new as a very new person to PyScript. What it can do, how it can do it, um, what it what it, from the back end, from the engine wise, what can we do for MicroPython? I'm I'm a fan of MicroPython, so I, I what I want to try and do is ah, okay. what can be achieved with MicroPython. And so it may be the case that if we were to look at full blown Python, then that might potentially be uh, a route. But I'm, I'm kind of keen to see what what can we do in the bounds of MicroPython. And so this was convoluted because I'm using um, ngrok just to put a little API in and pushing it to an API. And I've got to my laptop then and we can control it. Um, so um, uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm yeah. saying that because for another project, I, I, I... I send MQTT from JavaScript and it works well. So probably yeah. it could be possible, should be possible to just wrap the JavaScript library in from MicroPython and use it. But I don't, I never tried. And Antonio, yeah, there are yeah, yeah, yeah. people on this. There are several people on this call, Antonio, who want to use MQTT with stuff plugged into PyScript. So could you possibly share by putting a link in the chat to this call? Um, no, because where it's, your project is, so we can see how how you do that. No, because if I share the project, then you can control my TV. But uh, I can try to. <laughs> <laughs> Great answer. <laughs> but I, I can try to. Yes. To, yeah. To... Okay. Please share it. Please share it because there's a lot of interested parties with that. Any Any more questions for Piers? Martin, sorry. Yes, you've got your hand up. Yeah. No worries. It was more more just an observation for people. Like, if anyone's watching the video, if I just share my screen just briefly. One of the things about, um, because. Piers put the stuff on PyScript.com. So this is me, copied it. I just copied it into my, viewed the code, copied it into my own PyScript.com and then started to like mess around, work out, okay, let me let me find out what the action is. Let me learn out, okay, okay so it's, it's base right is the action that I need to send. And then you can start to play around if you had it. And um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's a way for 
like when you've got interesting things, it's just just kind of like a heads up. It's easy for you to copy the code and mess with it. I'm not advocating, obviously, copying this particular example and then putting large numbers into that range to, and having your. <laughs> but yes, that was all. Great stuff, Fabio. I can see you've got your hand up, matey. Uh, yeah, just a really, really quick one. Um, there, uh, maybe a suggestion. Like, uh, if you could save some lines of code and complexity using requests and uh, Python. Uh, Python, not so much. You have so many, so little uh, HTML components. But uh, just in case you, you didn't know, they are they are supported right now. Um, that's it. Okay, so yeah, I mean, I think this is an open thing around documentation, what we can do in Python, what we can do in full-blown Python, where we can go and find that out. Um, so for me, I'm a I'm an absolute fan request. I use requests every day, you know, every evening. I wake wake up and I've probably got something that's using requests. So I I love requests as well. Um, so is that available? Uh, is that from the full blown version of the the, the Python, um, or is that um, available within the? Oh MicroPython? yes, right, because you're using MicroPython. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to I'm trying to keep strict to MicroPython at the moment. Yeah, so, so I don't think you can use requests. Uh, you can use IDOM, though. You should be able. Um, here's, I have an experimental patch for requests that I will send you. Um, oh, awesome. Uh, that I did because I prefer to is the answer, and I've only used that because it was a it was a what method allows me to send a HTTP request, and that was one that worked. <laughs> so, uh, right. so yep. I'd I'd be very happy to use something which is uh, is a bit more Pythonic because it's that's more J JSE. Uh, and I'm trying to move away from JS and clearly onto Python, which is the most wonderful one in the world. So uh, hence, hence why we're here. <laughs> I'm just, uh, apologies for interrupting. I'm just looking at the time. Uh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, okay. uh, yeah. Um, I know Ted has his hand up. So Ted, very quickly. I'll go super quick. Uh, yeah, I, I think there's a lot of benefits that we could get out of utilizing WebSocket. It does work in PyScript very well. And it, what's unique about it is it actually allows you to connect connect cross domain without cores issues. So it's mm. it's used widely in the crypto space, but you basically make a dedicated WebSocket connection to a domain. Once you have that, you have a two-way connection. You can push commands and you can also get data back. So the ability for the UI to show actually where the arm is and send commands backwards, but no, it's a great point. I'm not going to take too much time on this one, but it's exact. I've used WebSockets and I've used that in crypto myself, uh, as far as a real time is concerned. I would have loved to have gone WebSocket because you can show the response in real time. Uh, and so it, it's something that we can. That I'd like to play with in the future as well. Um, for me, it's, it's knowing the capabilities of uh, PyScript, which is, yeah. is very new to me. So, yeah. Cool. This is why we have these fun sessions is because we learn such a lot and we're supporting each other. And on that note, Antonio's just pasted working JavaScript MQTT that of course, if it works in JavaScript, it also works in PyScript because we can access the JavaScript context in PyScript. Fantastic work. So last but not least, Chris Lafra, you said you have a cool project that you want to, to demo. Um, if, this takes longer than maybe seven minutes. I, I'd just like to say uh, cheerio to everyone as well, because I'm going to have to go soon to, to take my son to a trombone lesson. But uh, at, at that moment, Fabio is also the co-host of this. And uh, Fabio, if that's all right, could you sort of do the uh, to the end of the meeting? But if Chris is quick, I'll still be here. Chris, go for it. Yeah, so this will be a boring demo after seeing the last two, actually. Um, this is about my personal website. So you can see on the right, this is the end result. And on the left is the, yeah, the TypeScript. So we have an index HTML that just imports main. Main.py looks like this. So there's some construction to build it all up. And some of that is hierarchical, but there will be some interesting parts of it as well. And at the bottom, we see uh, some SVG actually being used as well. So these lines and the text are rendered as an SVG. Now, the fun thing is when I make a change, uh, because PyScript with MicroPython is so fast, uh, it's just amazing. Uh, so let me change a word here. Uh, that this should be indented, of course. So now the page will restart. And you can see there's also animation in there. And when it gets to the end, it will show the rest. And if this window is a little bit smaller, uh, there's some text hidden at the bottom, of course. So 
I'll do it again, a refresh. So it renders, and now <clears throat> there's some hidden text at the bottom. So it'll give you a hint that there's some information there as well by scrolling to it. Uh, so all of this is done using LTK, uh, which you can see here. And yeah, so there is some uh, article parts. So you have a V-box with an image in there, but the animation is done um, yeah, using selective rendering of these elements by changing the opacity and the size and the, uh, the width and the height. So what's that done? Let's look for animate. Um, let's look in one, 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 one. Where are you? So this is animating the, the scroll top and I was looking for this one yet. So these uh, these individual tiles that show up on the different locations uh, that is done right here. So you, you basically set the CSS to left top width and height to minimal, and then you animate to the intended size. And this is at 600 milliseconds minus the distance from the start. So in the, in the end, it goes a little bit slower. In the beginning, it goes faster, and then it slows down. It's just a, a little extra thing that I built in. And then uh, there's hover. When you hover over these elements, they turn orange. And if you click on them, you actually go to the text. So that's the demo. And questions? Great. That's awesome. So uh, we, can use, we can use LTK now. There's documentation somewhere on Read the Docs or something like that? Yeah, so I, when I clicked on that link on my homepage here, uh, it went to the LTK website and uh, here's the source. And there's also LTK kitchen sink that shows all the things you can do with LTK, um, including the- And this is, this is really both well. PyDied and MicroPython. Yeah, so this one is running in awesome. MicroPython. That's why it came up okay. pretty fast. So if I do it again, you can see like 200 milliseconds. Oh yeah, and I build an animation to explain what LTK is all about, um, also for fun. Um, so that is also done in LTK. Um, so yeah, their documentation is in line as well. If you switch to Pyodite, it starts up a little slower, you can see, but now we got uh, Python reflection working, so I can actually go and look at the docs. I'm also thinking of having a, a more traditional uh, link to the docs. Uh, maybe uh, if I have some spare time to do that. So that's basically it. Bravo. Bravo. Anybody else got, to, do you want to stop sharing your screen so we can see if people have got their hands up for questions? Um, I've got maybe one minute left. So any any questions? Um, not really a question, just a follow up with you, Chris. Uh, we. We need to uh, sit down and, and if we want to move that to the PyScript org, as we discussed last time, um, let's just do yeah. it. Yeah, would be good. Yep. Yeah, this is a great example of a framework built on top of the platform that is PyScript. So we're getting kind of the, all the geography sorted out. Andrea, hand up. Yeah. Yeah, uh, this was awesome. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to have the ability to, to actually fetch libraries from for MicroPython as well, because right now we don't have that ability. And I know Jeff landed a PR to, to have um, a package manager in MicroPython 2. And uh, I think this will be a great addiction so that we can have import LTK from both MicroPython and, uh, and PyoDad. So thanks for sharing this. It, it was also. Yep. So for now, there's a hack you can use. Um, you can dynamically install it from GitHub. So if you go to LTK itself, there is a hosted version on uh, on PyScript.com using MicroPython where you can use LTK. Yeah, I start wondering if we should enable like packages from foreign um, repositories or uh, foreign websites, and maybe that will enable. PyScript to to land any anything <laughs> from any website as a package 
uh, without necessarily need the the micro pip or uh, uh, anything that either PyoDad or MicroPython is running as a package manager because that would enable a lot of people to just fetch stuff and, and run it. And uh, at the same time, we have the files or fetch. And I think that should work with this use case too. Perfect. Yeah, possibly. That, I think that would be a good discussion, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, it does. Like here you can see, this is the example of LTK and MicroPython on PyScript.com. And this is how I import LTK from GitHub. Great stuff. It's just the files config API that we have. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Uh, do we have, because uh, I'm just looking at the time, I'm going to leave in about 30 seconds. So I'm going to try and wrap up the meeting. Um, any more questions, comments? Remember your Christmas cards. For those of you who weren't at the beginning of the meeting, I demoed a Christmas card made in PyScript in two weeks' time, just before Christmas. I want to see as many demos of Christmas cards written in PyScript as possible. Use your imagination. Knock yourself out. I don't care if the Christmas card is actually a real Christmas card, but delivered by a massive robot controlled by Chris in Boston in the living room of Piers in Oxford via the magic of MQTT and Bluetooth or whatever it is that you manage to cook up to make it happen. But let's just use our imaginations and deliver Christmas cards at the next uh, at the next one. Um, any more comments? No. Well, the only one being, oh, okay. if you missed anything, uh, I'll be putting the record on YouTube and tweeting uh, from today to tomorrow. Uh, yeah. So you should be expect those calls to be more regularly put uh, in those uh, YouTube and be be shared on Twitter. Excellent. Awesome. I can hear my son shouting, Dad, from downstairs. So I better stop um, and uh, call that time on, on our meeting. Thank you very much. This has been such a great meeting. Well done, folks. Ciao, ciao. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.